first part of this mini series I showed you how easy it was to prepare a wooden panel so that you can paint watercolours on it. In this part I want to show you how I took that panel and painted this otter using watercolours. My name is Liz Chadderton, I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish I'd known about ages ago and this week it's how we can use watercolour on a prepared wooden panel. The first thing I did was sketch out the otter using a blue watercolour pencil. I'll give you a link to the reference, it's from Pixabay. Now I need to mask the whiskers because I just can't paint round them and I'm going to use Pabio drawing gum and I'm putting it on with a rigger brush but you must protect your brush. I do that by dipping it in a strong solution of dish soap to stop the, the masking fluid ruining that brush. At the end you also need to wash it. I'm going to spatter on as well to give the illusion of water drops and these spatters will take quite a while to dry. If any go in the wrong place don't panic just let them dry and peel them off. Don't like the one on the nose, don't like the one with the tail so just need to be patient and peel them off and it'll all be fine. So with the masking fluid on it's always worth planning out some colours. These are Meaden paints that I got sent to have a try out and it's a Meaden panel so I thought we'll see how they all work together. So I put out some of Violet and a little of their Gamboge and mixed together it makes a pretty good brown which is what's in the middle there. I can see some pink so I've put out a little rose there and I've got burnt sienna, burnt and raw umber and a little sort of fallow blue and I think those should all work nicely. Usually I would say try out your colours on the same paper that you're painting on. We're painting on a panel so we haven't got that luxury but it's worth just seeing what they look like when they're on the paper because it doesn't always look the same as when it's in the palette. I've got a few round brushes to hand but this isn't a very large panel so I'm not going to have anything huge. I've got that dark mix of purple and gamboge and I'm going to start with this gorgeous bright eye here. Now when you're working on watercolour ground you will find it very difficult to layer. It's just the nature of it. it just doesn't hold on to the paint in the same way that watercolour paper does. So really aim to get your tones right first time. So put the dark, saving that little highlight and then just with a wet brush I'm pulling away some of that colour to soften it and to start forming the structure of this gorgeous otter going to leave plenty of little white areas to sort of indicate the fur. Come back in when this is drier to sort out the highlight because even though it's a highlight it's not white like that. One thing you'll notice as you work on this is that it takes a lot longer to dry than if you're working on paper and that's hardly a surprise because there's very little absorption going on, it's all drying by evaporation. So what I like to do is put the colour down and then use clean water to sort of pull it away and pull it in the direction that the fur is growing. What might also be fun is to drop in a little of that Prussian blue and let it wiggle through some of the wet areas. If you want it to go further you could tip your panel but do go careful because it does stay wet and on the surface for so long you do slightly risk having a um, tsunami of watercolour which is not what we're aiming for. Now let's come down the middle of the nose and there's a lot of blue in there so again we'll just use some of that lovely well, they call it Prussian blue but it doesn't look Prussian blue to me, it looks more like a fallow blue to me. And the centre is all quite dark so I'm going to make sure that I get my tones good and, good and dark at this point. 
that far eye just using that dark mix of purple and gamboge nice and creamy so there was no need to mask off the highlights in these eyes because they're, they're big and you can just retain them it looks far better if you do it that way than relying on masking fluid masking fluid for me is always absolute last resort it's a little bit of blue over here bags under its eyes and then the dark of that inner ear be aware of how things are drying if they're drying lighter you can always go back while it's wet and just drop more color in let it mix on the surface let's get nostrils in i meant to get rid of that see how easily the masking fluid comes off i remember i didn't like that splodge that i inadvertently put there seeing a little bit of pink I know it's not this pink, but don't worry, by the time some of this colour has mixed on the surface, it won't be such bright pink. So again, this is just clean water on my brush. And we're starting to form that lovely chin. Definitely pink in there. And the blue of the, the pencil outline would just disappear and melt into the, the background. So this is clean water. Which I'm using here the tip of my brush. I'm pulling out some of the pattern on that cheek and down to the whiskers. And you can see why we just had to mask those whiskers there really wasn't an option let's pop some color in there and let it go for a wiggle now under the chin it's very dark maybe just using the tip there start creating the texture of this lovely wet fur Vary the size of our marks. We can have a mixture of soft and hard edges, soft and hard marks. And because I'm on a little panel, I'm going to take some of this over the edge to get that 3D feel. The masking fluid I used had, is blue and that can cause problems because you sort of take it into account as you paint and sort of think there's more blue in this than there actually will be once it's removed. So do try and remember that and, and not get confused by the fact that you've got blue masking fluid. Up here I'm going to use a bit more of the burnt sienna just to vary it and let it use plenty of water to let it move and join join up as much as possible. If you want to you can always spray to just encourage some of the paint to move and feather. That's another little mark. Obviously, then you end up with loads of water on the surface. So you have to realise that it will affect your drying time. Just taking some of that round the edges. And use a dampish brush to soften you want anything softened it's 
so once it gets to this incredibly wet stage you're just going to have to be patient and make sure you don't knock your work or over fiddle or anything like that which of course is way easier to say than it is to do if you want to put some interesting textural marks you can always sprinkle just a little of table salt into the wet or drying wash and see what it does for you it may do something wonderful it may not can be quite temperamental so i'm just going to wet with water clean water again making sure it goes down the sides and i think we'll put in some blue we'll need to pull it away following the curve of those gorgeous whiskers don't want this to be too wishy-washy aiming for a little bit of subtlety but not too subtle this is some of that dark purple and yellow mix my, my head's going to come in the way in a moment because I'm going to blow this. So it's just a way of getting the paint to move on the surface in a slightly different style. I'm going to echo some of those drops. That's a little bit of the burnt sienna. You're going to have to paint around the ears and some of the top of the head because it's got a light edging to it. Can you see how that just defines the top of that ear? And we'll come over to this ear. So at this point, we need to leave it to dry and then we can start thinking about adjusting and deciding what to do next. That first layer has dried. In fact, it dried overnight because that was the time I was painting. And we can adjust things and that's the joy of working on this surface is that it lifts incredibly easily. So if we want to soften off an edge or remove something totally, we just need a damp brush and you can adjust. That is also its biggest downfall because if we want to add more layers, the big danger is that we will muddy up what's already there. It's the advantage and the disadvantage. I looked at this and I thought, mm, do you know what? I feel it's just a bit dull. I think it needs a bit of a, a zhuzh up. So I'm going to, I've got some quinacrone sienna in my palette and I'm going to use that just to give it a bit of a pep. First of all I'm going to work on those eyes because the highlights just need to be um, a little more sophisticated. And where we've left whites that aren't really white we can just gently tone them down go careful in your second layer with the amount of water that you've got on your brush if you take down the amount of water you use so thicker paint slightly drier brush then the chances of you disturbing that first layer are reduced they don't go away so use a soft brush as well they can still use water in this layer but just understanding the, the consequences of what might happen in that it may muddy up the under layer working in layers 
It's a classic watercolour technique and usually we can build tones very gently and carefully by working layer on layer and a good watercolour paper can hold on to many, many layers. It's open to us in the same way when we're working on this panel that's been prepared with watercolour ground. It just basically doesn't hold on in the same way. And much as many of the, the manufacturers say that watercolour ground makes any surface like a good quality watercolour paper, it doesn't. What you can do now is calm down any highlights if you had to leave little white areas to stop things flowing into each other. Now it's dry, of course, you can just go back and calm those down. So, for example, say around here, carry on with that impression of all that wet fur coming down here. We built up quite a lot in that first layer. So we might just repeat some of that in this layer. Oh, and by the way, I'd removed all the dry salt just in case you'd wondered about that. Just looking for a mixture of hard and soft edges, soft marks, defined marks, just to give real visual interest to the viewer. Soft marks tend to recede and hard marks tend to shout and come forward and say, you know, I'm the important thing, look at me, look at me. So we tend to have hard marks, say, around the eyes and then softer marks in the fur. But I want some hard, hard marks just to give the impression of the shadows and the clumps of fur and what's going on there. It's not, this is not a fluffy animal. I don't want this to be all cute and fluffy because this is, you know, otters are, well, apex predators basically. Check the sides. Might like bring some of that quin sienna into the background always a nice idea to look from a different direction because you see things differently and of course it might be a lot easier for you to work in different directions going to calm down this nose then let it dry remove the masking fluid and see what's happened the moment of truth because we're going to take off the masking fluid do make sure everything's dry before you do this because you just smear your paint if it's still damp you can see how easily it comes off and you've got no risk of it tearing the surface like you do if you are doing it on paper. My big gripe with masking fluid is that it always looks like you've put masking fluid on. You get a very clunky, solid line. So I never just leave it like this. I always try and tone things down or sort them out if I'm not happy with the marks. I'm going to use a lovely little rigger brush and some of the blue. And just refine a few of these. Make them extend a little. And if you want to give the impression of some that are a little sort of further away, you could just put a little line. With 
very last thing you might wish to do, you might not need to, is if you've lost any highlights, just get a little white gouache, add a little bit of water to make it workable, then simply go back in and add any highlights that may have been lost. Try not to overdo this. All that remains to do now is to seal this because you've seen how easily you can lift the watercolour. Don't seal it. One accidental splash of a cup of tea or water and your half your painting will have disappeared. So to seal it, I would recommend either a spray varnish, you don't want to brush it on because again that could smear the watercolour, or you can use Dorland's wax. I'll put a link to a film about Dorland's wax if you've not come across it. Before you seal it, don't forget to sign it and then you're done. So here's the final picture. Let me just show you the sides because I think it's really nice to take the image right round the edges so that it feels like the animal is in 3D and coming out off the, the surface at you. Now you might be able to see a slight shine on that. I've used Dorland's wax to seal this picture so it is waterproof, it is protected. You could use a matte spray varnish if you prefer and it'll look a lot more watercolour if it's just matte. You could use a gloss varnish, a satin varnish or as I say I've used a wax which deepens the colours and just gives it a, a nice almost leathery feel. I really like it. I hope you've enjoyed that and seen that watercolour has all sorts of possibilities on non-traditional surfaces. It doesn't have to just stay on the paper. Have a go and I'd love to see what you get up to.